Okay, finally, we're gonna take a look at the other type of question, the one with heat transfer rates. And so I set up a scenario in which I've got a bed, fantastic bed. There's a headboard and some pillows. Good. And it's cold. It's cold and unpleasant. The temperature of the bed is going to be, so temperature of the bed is going to be something like 10 degrees Celsius. So it's kind of cold. We're talking about maybe 50 degrees, which isn't that cold, but it's still not all that pleasant. And so since holograms love warmth, I've taken a blanket and I put it on the bed here and plugged it in. It's an electric blanket and it's warmed up and I set it on the bed. Now the blanket, temperature of, I see the downside of having bees for everything, so I'm gonna call this BL for blanket. Bear with me. We're gonna say that it is at a steamy 30 degrees Celsius. And I wanna know how much heat is going to flow into my bed uh, in one second. Because I could go through and I could find some things, some stuff that we've talked about more in chemistry, of course, but how much heat you add something to how much it actually changes temperature. And so I could go with more on this, but I think that'll do. What I've done is the blanket is now on top of a thin sheet that is on top of the bed. And so the heat's gonna have to go through that sheet and into the bed. Now the sheet has a thickness of about one centimeter, which is equal to 0 0.01 meters. Again, never hurts to use SI. Okay, and I wanna know how much heat is flowing in there. Well, I also need to have an idea of how big the blanket is. And so my blanket is two meters by 1.5, yeah, 1.5 meters. Okay, so if I multiply those together, I'll get my area. Finally, our equation, it looks something like this. H, which is our heat transfer rate, is going to be equal to, I didn't write that down, but that's fine, K times our area times our change in temperature, or I should say our temperature difference between the two, because we don't actually have something changing temperature, we're just looking at the warm thing versus the cold thing, divided by L, which in this case is actually going to be our thickness. That's how the distance that the heat has to go through. From the warm blanket to the cold bed, it's got to go through that sheet. Okay, so when I fill these in, I need a K, and that is a coefficient of thermal conductivity. And for a sheet, I think I went with cotton of some kind. I put the numbers together a little while back, but checking my engineering table, it gave me 0 0.04 watts per meter Kelvin. Okay, so remember this equation gives us an answer in watts, which is energy per time. That'll be joules per second, effectively. And so when I plug that in, I'm gonna have 0 0.04 watts per meter Kelvin times our area, which is uh, three, yeah, three square meters. Hopefully I did that right. Two meters times 1.5 meters should be three meter, three square meters times our temperature difference. Well, that's gonna be 30 minus 10, so that's giving me 20 degrees centigrade, or I'm sorry, Kelvin. The only reason that I make the distinction is the units that I used here are Kelvin. You could also find them, it'll be the exact same number in watts per meter Celsius, but since I'm using the Kelvin one, we'll stick with that. Divided by the length that the heat has to go through, in this case, the thickness of that sheet, 0.01 meters. And when I evaluate this, normally I actually do that beforehand. I don't have a copy of the thing right offhand, so we will calculate it on the fly. 0 0.4 times 3 times 20 divided by 0 0.01 gives me, this number sounds familiar, 240 watts, which is the same thing as 240 joules per second. In other words, in the first second, I have 240 joules of energy that flow into it. For the most part, on any of these questions, I'll be fine as long as you get the value in watts. I'm not really going to hit you with anything else. But we haven't done as much with power compared to, say, energy, so I wanted to try and connect it back to values of energy there.
But that's how we find heat transfer rates.